Since the DM32X has color-coded ports, you can go ahead and make all of your tubing connections before you power on the gauge. So for a blower door, yellow to yellow, red to red, and you can plug in your data cable at the top. The DM32X has a belt clip on the back, that way you can clip it to the top crossbar to keep it out of the way and at eye level. The DM32X charges with the USB-C port on the bottom. The indicator light above the charge port will flash blue to let you know that the gauge is charging. When this light is red, that means the battery is low and needs to be charged soon. The back of the DM32X is also magnetic, so you can stick it to HVAC equipment such as air handlers or furnaces if you're using the gauge to collect any static pressure readings. To turn the gauge on, tap the power button on the right hand side. You'll see a blue light turn on above the power button to indicate that the gauge is booting up. The gauge just takes a few seconds to boot up. Once it's finished, it will take you to this home screen where you can access all of its functions. And to power down the DM32X, you can tap the power button on the side and you can select power off or restart, or you can just hold the button down and the gauge will power off. The blue indicator light will not be illuminated if the gauge is off. You'll notice there are a few apps to choose from. The Gauge, the RCloud app, and our Resources app. We'll go ahead and begin with launching the Gauge and going through the different features. The Gauge takes just a few seconds to load up, and this is what the home screen looks like once the Gauge is launched. At the top of the screen, you'll see the serial number, the date the Gauge was calibrated last, as well as the firmware version. This way I don't have to hunt through the gauge and see what any of these numbers are. The DM32X is a two-channel manometer. Channel A is on the left with pressures represented at the top. Channel B is on the right with pressures or flows represented on the bottom. Underneath where pressures and flows are displayed, you can see your fan range and your fan model along with the fan speed. There's a slider bar on the bottom so that you can adjust fan speed quickly when a pressure target isn't necessary. To change how pressure is displayed on channel A, simply tap on channel A and a menu will pull up where you can choose from pascals, inches of water, or pounds per square foot. You can do the same with pressure or flow on channel B. Just tap where channel B is displayed and you'll see a menu that displays a variety of both pressure and flow outputs. There's a favorites list at the top to select one of these outputs as a favorite, I can just tap the heart, and if I scroll up to the top, I can see it under favorites. That way I don't have to scroll down the list if I want to select that option in the future. And to remove it, I can just tap the broken heart if I don't want it in my favorites list anymore. And you can scroll down to see the different flow outputs that are here as well. We also have flow normalized by area. If you're doing a test that requires that, we also have air changes per hour. Uh, typically, that's going to be required by code for residential blower door tests. And as you scroll down, you'll see uh, several other flow outputs as well to display your results in a variety of ways. Across the bottom of the screen, you'll see options to set pressure, set speed, or your main settings. In the settings menu, we can change inputs about the building or how data is represented. You can add area, volume if you're doing ACH, you can change the pressure exponent, but for a single point test, we like to leave that at 0.65. And you can change some functions on the gauge as well, such as the language, the time averaging, anything you can access from the home screen, you can also access in the settings menu. For the jogging options, you can set how many pascals you want to go up if you're going to tap the jog button to jog the pressure up or down. So you can adjust that from five to a higher or lower number. Same for fan speed percentage, you can adjust how much that jogs up or down as well. And to get out of the settings, you can just tap the back button to go back to the home screen. To go back to the main home screen of the DM32X, I can just tap this dot at the bottom in the middle. To close out apps on the DM32X, just press the square button on the bottom right hand side of the screen. 
That'll allow you to swipe up and close out any apps that might be open. To access the wireless features on the DM32X, just swipe down from the top and you can turn Wi-Fi on and off. You can select Bluetooth. You can lock the screen so that it doesn't rotate or put it on airplane mode. And you can also swipe down the menu to select a network to connect to and other connectivity settings as well. To change to a different fan or device, I can tap on the picture of the fan or tap on the model. This will pull up a menu where I can select different fan options and save some as favorites so that they'll be at the top of the list. As I scroll down here, I can see all kinds of fan options for duct testers and blower doors from our older models to newer models. And I can also see the flow box and the whole flow option where I can make my own exhaust fan flow meter. And we also have all of our competitors fans to select from as well. This includes all of their fans for blower door and duct leakage testing, as well as their devices for airflow measurement. Once you select the fan that you're using, then you can select the range. As you scroll down, you can see everything from completely open to the lowest possible fan setting. Once you select your range, this will take you back to the home screen. The button that says bias is where you capture your baseline reading before you run a blower door test. You begin capturing a baseline by pressing the record button in the lower left hand corner. The gauge will start counting down, then you can start seeing the data collected from the pressure differences between inside and outside on the graph. There are options to clear the baseline and you can end the recording by pressing the record button once again. It'll ask you if you want to save it and you'll say yes, and then the baseline will be captured and then you can press back to go back to the home screen of the gauge where you'll then see the baseline recorded underneath your reading on channel A. To seek a target pressure for a blower door test or a duct test, you'll tap set pressure at the bottom left corner and this keypad will come up. There's some hot keys over to the side so you don't have to press a number at every time. So to run a blower door test here, I'll just tap 50 and the gauge will automatically power on the fan to that 50 Pascal pressure target. Right above the picture of the fan, you can see the pressure target that the gauge is seeking and you can see what your time averaging is set to as well. If you ever wanna change that, you can just tap time average and it'll bring you to that menu in the settings. Here you can adjust that to whatever you want on the keypad or there's some hotkeys over to the right hand side. If you want to jog up or down, you see these green buttons to the left and right of the stop button. If I want to change my reading from CFM to ACH or any other output, I just tap on channel B and then select whatever output that I want and I don't have to stop the fan. If I select ACH, you can see that volume appears on the home screen. That way, if I need to change the volume to make ACH accurate, I can just immediately tap on that without having to dig through the settings menu. And if I want to return to CFM or change it to any other output, I can just tap back on channel B again and switch it back immediately. The at feature is also on here. I can tap that to extrapolate the reading to give me exactly what that CFM would be at 50 pascals or what it would be if I couldn't quite reach 50 pascals from the open setting. The hold button freezes the reading, so that way I can talk about it with a client if I want to without it jumping around. And then I can unlock it by pressing the hold button again. And of course, to stop running the fan, I can just press the red stop button here in the middle. The DM32X also has a graphing feature. If I press the graph button, now I can see either channel A or channel B displayed as a graph and watch how either the pressures or flow change. There's also an average line that I can check or uncheck to show an average of what's happening on the screen. This graphing feature can come in handy if I want to do some data logging to see how pressures change over time, whether if it's in a room 
or a part of a building as conditions change. I can save a graph or take a screenshot or record what's going on over a period of time. I can also change the duration of time that a graph is recording and I can adjust my time averaging from here as well. Now I'm back to my selection of apps where we can choose rCloud, which is our automated testing app that's built in locally into the gauge. So there's no need to pair a phone or a tablet to run multi-point tests or any kind of test where we can generate an automated report. Now we can just do everything on the gauge without the assistance of another device. Once the app is open, I can go in and view any tests that I've performed in the past. All those reports will be there. Or I can select to run a new test, whether it's a blower door test or a duct test or capturing airflow off of a flow box. There are a variety of test standards to choose from, or you can just opt to run a plain blower door test without a standard attached to it. There's some different inputs that you can put in about the house and about the test that you're gonna conduct, as well as what your pass or fail target would be in ACH or CFM50. To use the geolocation services and to pull outdoor weather data, it's best to be connected to the internet over Wi-Fi. However, you don't necessarily have to be. You can enter these in manually if connecting to the internet is not an option. You'll notice that there are three sections that need to be completed. One for the address, one for the building inputs, and one for the weather conditions. There will need to be a check mark beside all three sections in order to move on and conduct a test. Once all three sections are completed, you'll then make sure that you have the correct fan selected as well as the correct range that you're gonna to wanna to start off with. In our cloud, you can save your equipment in your account and go and select fans that you own. Once you select your fan, then you'll go ahead and select your range. Once everything is set up, then you can select start test in the bottom right hand corner. The gauge will then begin to zero itself out and then prompt you on what to do. It'll let you know that it's about to do a baseline test, which means you'll need to cover the fan. Then follow the prompts to conduct the rest of the test Save it and accept the report if everything was done correctly. You can name the report whatever you like and access the data in our account through our secure server at any point later on. The Resources app is the third app that you'll see on the bottom of the home screen. This is where you will find all of the manuals, quick guides, and even some instructional videos for all of the products that RetroTech makes. So there's a section at the bottom for blower door, there's one for duct tester, there's one for the flow box, there's one for the flow hood attachment for the duct tester, and there's some guides for using pressure pans as well. Since the gauge has a very high quality display, you're able to clearly read all of the quick guides and manuals for all of the devices that we make. This way, if you're new to air tightness testing, or maybe if it's been a while, the gauge can teach you what to do and you can brush up on your skills so that you can do tests correctly in the field without needing any assistance. We will continue to add tools and features to this resources app, including calculators that you can use in the field to determine how many fans that you need, determining stack effect, and if you're connected to the internet, you'll have more resources to access through our YouTube channel as well.